From this lecture, we will start a new chapter and the name of the chapter is Basic System Properties. In this chapter, we will categorize systems based on different properties. The first category is category of static and dynamic systems. In this, we will understand what are static systems and what are dynamic systems and we will also solve plenty of examples to have a better understanding of this category. After this, we will discuss what are causal and non-causal systems. The third one is time invariant and time variant systems. After this, we have linear and non-linear systems. Fifth one is invertible and non-invertible systems. And the last one is stable and unstable systems. So you can clearly see we have 12 different types of systems which we have to discuss in the coming presentations. And let me tell you one thing, the definition of these 12 systems is not very complicated. Anyone can understand how they are defined. But when question is there, you will find some difficulty in determining the exact nature of the system. And for this, we will solve different examples. We will try to cover each and every possible cases in all these 12 systems. So examples or questions are very important in this particular chapter. That's why we will complete the definition of the systems quickly and we will directly dive into solving the questions. Now after this, I will explain few basic concepts which are important to understand the different types of systems. So we will first understand some basic notations and how actually the system works. Here we have a system represented by this block and the input to the system is xt. This is one standard notation we will use throughout this chapter. xt will be our input. Then we have yt and as you can see the arrow is coming out of this system. This is the output. So xt is input yt is output. This is the standard notation. Now the output yt depends on input xt as well as the property or the type of the system. So based on the input and the changes produced by the system, the output will have some value. Now let us try to understand what is future input, what is present input and what is past input. The output y is let's say equal to xt. This is case number one. In case number two, output y is equal to x t minus one. And in the third case, in the third case, output y t is equal to x t plus one. Now to understand if the output is depending on the present, past or future inputs, we will simply take t equal to zero or t equal to one or any other value or any other value and in this case I will take t equal to 0. So in first case we will put t equal to 0 and let's see what we have. We have y0 equal to x0. So you can clearly see the output is dependent on the present input. How we define present and past? When t is equal to 0 this is present. If t is equal to minus 1, this is past and when t is equal to 1, this will be future. And as we are talking about t equal to 0, this means we are at this time instant and relative to this time instant, t equal to minus 1 will be past and t equal to 1 will be future. In the same way, you can have different past and different future values. Now if you are at time instant t equal to minus 1, t equal to 0 will become future and t equal to minus 2 will become past. So it all depends on our analysis and our reference. In this case, we have taken t equal to 0 as the reference. Output is y0 dependent on the present input. This means obtained at the present time and the input here is also for the present time. So output is dependent on the present input. Now let's see what happens in case number two when t is equal to zero output will be y zero and input will be x of minus one now you can clearly see the output is dependent on the past input and in the last case the output will be y zero 
and it is equal to input x1 so the output which is the present output is dependent on the future input so these are the three cases to understand how to know if the output is dependent on the present past or future values of input simply consider t equal to 0 1 or any other value put it in the equation given to you or the relation given to you and you will have the proper understanding of the relation now this will be useful when we study static and dynamic systems causal and non-causal systems now for time invariant and time variant systems we will see how to implement delay and i will explain it when we will discuss time invariant and time variant systems for the fourth one linear and non-linear systems we will understand the principle of superposition in which we will see law of additivity and law of homogeneity and this is also something we are going to discuss in this particular lecture in the fifth one invertible and non-invertible systems we will discuss one-to-one -one mapping and many-to-one -one mapping and based on it we will define invertible and non-invertible systems the last one stable and unstable systems we will define them by the help of bibo criteria bi is for bounded input bo is for bounded output i will explain what do we mean by bibo here and we will also discuss it when we start stable and unstable systems bounded input means the amplitude of the input should be finite the amplitude should be finite it should not reach to infinity and by the bounded output we mean the same thing the amplitude of the output should not reach to infinity it should be finite now let's understand this by the help of this diagram here you are having signal xt as an input signal and this signal here is having the finite amplitude having the finite amplitude from minus infinity to infinity and if this system produces an output which is also having finite amplitude from minus infinity to infinity then we will call this system stable system so this is all you should know regarding the bibo criteria and we will discuss this more in the lecture of stable and unstable systems so this is all for this lecture i have given you one outline of this chapter and from the next lecture we will start static and dynamic systems so this is all see you in the next one